Today we're going to work on a ladder problem. This is going to entail torque and other things that we've studied so far this year. We have Slim Jim here on the ladder. The ladder is 5 meters long. It's 3 meters from the wall and so obviously as a 3-4-5 triangle this must be 4 meters. Well that can help us find either one of these angles. Which one do we use? Not really important but just for the sake of picking one I'm going to call that theta. Well we could find that theta by using sine, cosine, or whatever, we always tend to use tangent. So tangent to the minus 1, 4 divided by 3. That says that uh, this angle is 53 degrees. That's going to be close enough. Okay, so we have 53 degrees here. Now we could just put those numbers in that we have and use those for uh, other things, but that just makes it something simple. All right, so now since this is at static equilibrium, we have to figure out where all the forces are. Well, the force of the ladder is going to act right at its center of mass, which is right here, and that's going to pull down with 120 newtons. First thing you should always do is convert all kilograms to newtons, otherwise, you might accidentally put newtons, or sorry, kilograms, into your torque equation. Now, I did not give an actual distance that Slim Jim is up the ladder, so if that's 5 meters, let's call that 2.5, uh, call that 3.5 meters, just for the sake of argument. It doesn't really matter what we choose. And Slim Jim, if that's 60 kilograms, this is 600 newtons. All right. Now, the, different, the other forces that we have, we have the normal force from the wall, and even though I could call it FW, F normal. I'm going to call it FW just so that I can distinguish it. The, um, uh, the ground here is going to be pushing up with a normal force. That if we want to call it the force of the ground. And then since it's going to want to slide out this way, there's going to be friction pushing backwards like that. Okay. Now for our first um, conditions of equilibrium, I'm going to move this a little to the left so that we have more room here. Um, the most important, uh, if we talk about equilibrium here, so we have the force in the x direction equals zero, that means that the f normal force, sorry, the uh, frictional force, which is left, and the wall, which is a positive, must be equal. Sorry, it was called that FW. So the force of the wall, the normal force of the wall, must equal the force of friction. We get that from this condition of equilibrium. Well then, from the y direction, it should be, and I'm just going to do this pretty easily, you should be able to see that all the down forces, which are the 600 and the 120, equals the normal force of the ground up. So the force of the ground must be 720 newtons. So now we have some information. but we still need to come up with some of these numbers. So we have to go and use a different condition of equilibrium, which is torque. I'm going to move these. Actually, I don't even need that anymore. Don't need that. So now let's talk about torque. The third condition for equilibrium is the sum of all torques equals zero. Well, using the right-hand rule, you would notice that the 600 and the 120 are causing a counterclockwise torque, wrapping your fingers around a bar your, th your fingers would be going counterclockwise, your thumb would be coming out of the page, so these are going to be positive torques. And the f this the force of the wall is going to cause it to go clockwise, which would be a negative torque. And they'll have to balance each other. So, we also know that torque equals R cross F, or, I actually call it equal, force perpendicular to the bar or the perpendicular distance times the force. This is going to be much more useful. This is known as the moment arm. So let's start with Slim Jim. The moment arm means the perpendicular distance. We do something known as pegboard where we actually uh, show that, that torque does not deter, does not um, does not depend on the horizontal distance, or sorry, the vertical distance, only the horizontal distance from the pivot. Well, we're going to choose this down here to be our pivot. Why is that? 
because there are two forces here that disappear and if we choose it up here only one force disappears. Now since we already know the force of the ground that would not be a big difference. So I'm going to take the force, I draw it infinitely down. Notice it intersects perpendicular at this point. I probably should make this blue so that we can see this a little bit better. If so this is my force, so I'm going to pull it right here. So this is 600 newtons, and my moment arm, or the distance from the pivot, is right here. This is R perpendicular for the 600 newton force. So if I do this for Slim Jim, is going to equal this distance down here, which is going to be the 3.5 times the cosine. of 53 degrees, that gets me R perpendicular. Then I have to multiply by that, that by the force, which is 600 newtons. And remembering that this is going to be a positive torque. Now, you might want to remember that in, your, in my calculator when I do this, it is possible if you do this wrong that it will multiply 53 times 600 and take the cosine of it. So I do the first part, which just gives me 2.11 times 600, and that gives me this number and again rounding is not what we care about right now so the, that gives me the torque of Slim Jim about this pivot remember draw down this is your perpendicular well let's switch to a different color here to find the perpendicular uh, or to find the torque of the center of mass of the of the uh, ladder well here we go drawing it all the way down this is going to be the 120 newton force and for it r is going to be from here to here and i know i'm right on top of itself that's a little bit tricky here so this distance is going to be this distance times the cosine of theta so the torque of the ladder around of its center of mass and i'm going to put this the force on the left side so we can do it all at one time is going to be force times perpendicular distance. Well, if the whole thing is 5, then this distance from here to here is going to be obviously 2.5 meters. But I want the perpendicular distance, so that's going to be times the cosine of 53 degrees. Now let me just pause real quickly and make sure that you remember, if they gave you this angle instead, those would be sine because they would be opposite. This gives me 120 cosine, sorry, Try start over at 120 times 2.5 times cosine of 53, and I get 181 roughly. I know I'm not being cautious with sig figs here, but we'll be close enough. All right. Now, what about the torque here? I don't have a really good color that I think you'd be able to see well, so I'm just going to stay with black on this one. So I draw the force infinitely long, and it, and here it is. From this point, straight down, oh, that's nice and thick, you can see that. This is R, right here. Now, can you see that if I take this perpendicular distance and I move it over, it ends up being this distance as well? Now, technically, this would be our, our uh, perpendicular for the wall, but so it turns out that this is the same distance. So we have the torque of the wall equals negative force of the wall times this distance here, which is opposite. So it would be 5 times the sine of 53 degrees. Okay. So now we have all three torques, and we only have one unknown. So now we can very simply put this into our torque equation that the sum of all the torques equals 0, which is going to be 1264 plus 181 minus FW. And let me just put in that 5 sine 35, sine of, sorry, 53. That get me, that's close enough to 4 for me not to care any more than that. Equals 0. So 4 times FW gives me 1264 plus 181, 1445, divide by the 4, and I get 361. 
newtons. Okay, because I left that was as f, I know that this is torque, force times distance, and we've gotten that, that number there. Again, we already found out this equals the force of friction. Well, what if, for instance, we wanted to go a little bit step farther and we said this is the minimum for it to slip or something, or uh, we wanted to know what the force of friction is at this point. Well, we've got our normal force of 720, and then the force of friction equals mu times the normal force. Um, we don't have mu, but we could find out what it would be. Uh, you know, Right now, we know that the minimum force of friction is 361. If this was the minimum to keep it in place, we would solve for mu would equal force of friction divided by Fn gives me 361 divided by 720 and that gives me 0.5 and that's all there is to it no no units on the coefficient of friction again recapping the most important things remember to put to change all kilograms to newtons first because in this equation you're going to have to be working with with force times distance remember that it's either find the perpendicular force times the distance or find the perpendicular distance times times the force and in this case finding the moment arm the perpendicular distance is much simpler